And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Masks of Asia. What's the matter, honey? What's wrong? Oh, I, I, I must be going insane. Why? Well, I, I was asleep. Suddenly, I woke up. A voice seemed to be calling to me. I started downstairs, always listening to that strange, unearthly voice. When I got down here, I walked into the living room and stood by the fireplace looking at the masks of Asia. And Bert, Bert, I saw a pair of eyes in each, each mask looking down at me. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Masks of Azure. And now for our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Masks of Azure. There are certain things in this life of ours which can never be explained, at least with any normal rational explanation. Often we try to shrug them off, to forget about them, so that the question will not rise in our minds to trouble our waking hours and to create nightmares in our sleep. But there are some things which can never be forgotten, and among them are the masks of Asia. Marsha's uncle sent them to us. Harold Letterby was a man of wealth and unusual tastes. He traveled a good deal, and frequently he'd send back little curiosities that he thought we might enjoy. So we thought there was nothing unusual about the masks of Azor. Oh, who can that be at this hour? I don't know, but don't you think you'd better see who it is? <laughs> I suppose so. Package for Marcia Stanton. Well, I'm Marcia Stanton. Will you sign here, please? Yes, of course. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Did you order anything, Bert? No. Did you? No, not that I can remember. Oh, wait a minute, Bert. It's from Uncle Harold. <laughs> Harold to go broke something as all these things. Well, open it, honey. See what's in it. Did you notice the postmark? Mm-hmm, Istanbul. Well, I'll save those stamps for Greg. He'll want them. <laughs> Uncle Harold's certainly been useful to Greg in his stamp collection, hasn't he? <laughs> well, there, that's done. Now I'll take the top off the box. What? Why, well, there are two masks in the box. Gold masks. And a letter. Uh-huh. Here, I'll open it. Read it loud, Marcia. All right. Let's see. Oh, my dear Marcia and Bert. Here is a little present I picked up in Istanbul. I hope that you like them as much as you seem to have enjoyed the other curiosities I have sent you. I picked them up at a little shop from a dealer who was quite anxious to get rid of them. He called them the Masks of Asia. They're almost pure gold, and yet I bought them quite cheaply. There's some kind of a story connected with them. I don't know what it is. If I learn anything more, I'll be sure to write you. We'll return to the state shortly. Love, oh. Uncle Harold. Hmm. They're beautiful. And yet grotesque at the same time. Well, they look human. And yet... Well, it was pretty nice of Harold to send them to us. Where should we hang them? I don't know. That's your domain, not mine. Well, how about... Oh, over the fireplace? One on each side of the mirror? That sounds pretty good. Well, we can hang them right now. Anything to make a man work. Bert. Yes, dear. Oh, it, uh, it, it it's nothing. Well, what were you going to say? Well, I, uh, I don't know. For a minute, I had the strangest sensation about those masks. 
as if they could actually see me. It didn't take more than a few minutes to hang the masks. They hung one on each side of the mirror over the fireplace. They looked quite good there, and yet, in a way, they seemed out of place. The following night, Greg dropped in for a while. Thanks for the stab, Bert. <laughs> that was the first thing he said when the package came. Greg will want the stamp. All the way from Turkey. <laughs> from your Uncle Harold, Marshal? Mm-hmm. He sent us those. I wondered where you'd got them. They're really quite nice. They're beautiful and yet grotesque in a way. That's just what I said. Practically the same words. <laughs> you think you both had one mind. Well, they certainly catch your eye. Is that real gold? According to Harold, it is. Well, it must be quite valuable. Well, Uncle Harold said he bought them for a song. It couldn't have been very cheap. The gold alone is worth a good deal. As a matter of fact, Harold said the dealer seemed quite anxious to get rid of them. I wonder why. Well, why worry about it? Uh, do they have a name? Mm-hmm. They're called the Masks of Azor. Azor. You know, I've seen that name somewhere before. A-S-H-O-R, I think it's spelled. I can't remember where. Well, don't worry about it. What? Anything wrong, Greg? The holes the masks have for eyes. I thought I saw something, that's all. Saw what? I don't know. For a minute, I thought there were really eyes in the masks, and that they were watching me. Watching every move I made. Yet it happened again. I looked closely at the masks... Yet I could see nothing unusual about them. They hung there on the wall, lifeless, with that strange mocking expression on their gold faces and yawning empty holes for eyes. For a minute, I... I had the desire to destroy them. Greg left about ten. At eleven, Marsh and I went to bed. I fell asleep almost at once. I don't know what woke me, but of a sudden I was awake. I looked over at Marsh's bed, only to find it unoccupied. There was no sound in the room. Nothing save for the tiny heartbeat of the clock. For some reason, I... I had a desire to go downstairs. Something seemed to be directing my actions. I was fully awake, yet... I seemed to be in some kind of trance. I'd started down the stairs. Marcia, is anything wrong? Bert! Bert! What's the matter, honey? What's wrong? I I, I must be going insane. Why? I I was asleep. Suddenly, suddenly I woke up. A voice seemed to be calling me. I started downstairs, always listening to that strange, unearthly voice. When I got down here, I walked into the living room and stood by the fireplace looking at the masks of Asia. And Bert, Bert, I saw a pair of eyes in each mask looking down at me. You must have imagined No, no, Bert, I didn't. Those masks had eyes, and they were watching me. Watching every move I made. Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Masks of Azor. I had awakened in the middle of the night. Something had compelled me to go downstairs, and I found Marcia down there. She was almost hysterical. Those masks had eyes, and they were watching me. Watching every move I made. Wait a minute, Marsha. Take a look at them again. With the lights. No, I can't. Of course you can. Take your hands away from your face. There. Now take a look at them. Uh, They're just as they should be. Of course they are. You imagined you saw eyes, Marsha. Perhaps it was a trick of the moonlight. I guess you're right, Bert. Oh, of course I am. Now, let's go back upstairs to bed. The 
following day was Saturday, and I didn't have to get on to the office. We both slept rather late that morning. A short time after we'd eaten breakfast... Yeah, I'll get it, Marsha. All right, dear. Telegram, sir. No. If you'll just sign right here. Mm, of course. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Who was it, Bert? A telegram. Well, who'd be sending us a telegram? I don't know. I'll see. Who's it from? Harold. Uncle Harold? What does he say? I'm returning to the States as soon as possible. Taking plane this evening. Be very careful of masks of azure. Do not let anyone have them. Am in danger of my life, Harold. In danger of his life? What did they mean? I don't know. But it has something to do with the masks of azure. Saturday evening, Greg dropped in. What he told us that night was the first inkling I had that Harold Letterby had stumbled upon a relic of the past that would have been better had been forgotten for all time. By the way, I did a little research on those masks of yours. Oh? Did you find out anything interesting? Yes, quite a good deal. Well, give us a rundown. I don't know if you'd like to hear it. Why not? It's not very pleasant. Well, tell us anyway. All right. You see, I knew I'd heard the name Asia somewhere. Finally came back to me. In college, I took a course in mythology. That's where I'd heard the name. Asia was the messenger of the underworld. It was he who went forth and summoned the victims to death in the final counting. He wore a mask when he appeared on Earth, which he removed when he saw his victim. The mask was also worn to protect others, for whom the time was not ready to gaze upon his countenance. For the sight of his face meant death. You were right when, when you said it wasn't pleasant. He was accompanied always by a dog, a large dog of indeterminate breed who went before him. Azor's presence was always known by the howling of the dog. Well, of course, that's just a myth. Azor never really existed. I have to take it for what it's worth. Oh, yes, and one other thing. Yes. It said that the masks were once stolen from him, and he's been searching for them ever since. That he wears a different mask while searching for the gold ones. Oh, you... You've given me the shivers. Well, that's the story, Marsha. It sounds like nonsense. A being who set forth to summon people to death, always accompanied by a dog. The superstitious belief that's come down to us from the childish minds of an ancient people. Did you hear that dog? Oh, it's only a dog in someone's backyard, baying at the moon. Rather a coincidence, you might say, talking about a dog and then hearing one howling. But just a coincidence. What's that? I don't know. Sounds like an animal of some kind. Scratching at the door. Uh, I'll take a look. I'll go with you. Now, now, be careful. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing out here. What? I said there's nothing out here. But I distinctly heard something scratching at the door. Well, there's nothing here now. There's no need to get upset about it. Let's go back in. I can't understand it. Forget about it, honey. I'm sorry if what I've told you has upset you. A dog. Howling again. Somebody ought to talk to the guy who owns that animal. There's something at the door. Someone must be playing a joke on us. See what's there. I want to know what's outside. I'll go, Bert. Uh, I'll go, too. But is someone playing a joke on me? Don't move. It is a dog. Why, I don't... You wouldn't stand a chance. Balak. Balak. Come here. Must be the dog's owner. Balak! Where are you? Quiet, Balak. Are you the owner of this dog? Yes. I'm sorry if he's caused you any trouble. But you ought to... You ought to keep him on a leash. Is everything all right? Yes, everything's all right, Marshal. Oh, your dog, it, it frightened us. I'm very sorry about that. Balak, you shouldn't run so far away from me. What are you looking at? I'm sorry. I was looking past you to those masks you have hanging over the fireplace. Quiet. I'd better put the leash on him. If you'll excuse me, I'll be going. Sorry to have disturbed you. Well, we... 
Might as well go back inside. Wait a minute. Why? He dropped something. I'm going down to get it. He was a queer sort of fellow, wasn't he? Yes. His face looks so strange. Soft. Almost like rubber. <gasps> Marcia! What's the matter? Look! Look! He dropped it as he was walking away. He dropped it deliberately. Well, what is it? It's a mask. The mask of Azure. <laughs> Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Masks of Azure. We stood just outside the house. A minute before, the man and his dog had disappeared from our sight. Marcia went down the stairs to the walk where he dropped something. And then she screamed. It's a mask. The mask of Azure. Here, let me see that. It is a mask. A sponge rubber mask. Remember what I said about his face? Yes, I do. What are we going to do? We can't do anything until Harold gets here. Maybe then we'll... We'll learn some more about these masks of Azure. Oh. I'm sure that... Marcia didn't sleep that night. As for myself, I dropped off occasionally. Only to awaken with a start. But each time I looked across the room... Marcia was still in her bed, staring at the ceiling. Occasionally during the night, I heard the sound of the dog howling out there in the darkness. And each time I heard it, the sound of its voice made me shudder. The following afternoon, about four o'clock, a cab pulled up in front. Harold Letterby got out and came up the walk leading to our house. I see that you received the masks. Yes. And did you receive the cable? Yes, yes, the following morning. When you bought these masks, you said that the dealer was anxious to get rid of them. Why? Had I known then what I do now, I would never have bought them. I think we know some of the story about Azure coming to Earth to conduct his victims back to death. And the dog, Bert. Don't forget the dog. Did you know about the dog? Yes. We found out about it last night. Who? How? It was here. Here? That's right. That he sure has found the masks. He knows they're here. He saw them last night when the door was open. Are you sure it was Azure? After he left, Marcia found a mask. A sponge rubber mask. He will be back, you know. Oh, I wish you'd never found the mask. No more so than I, my dear. A short time after I'd mailed them to you, he sure paid me a visit. He and the dog. I, too, found a sponge rubber mask after he'd left. The night before last, I... I saw something behind the mask. Like I... We must hide the masks from him. Otherwise, he will claim us all. What are you talking about? I have a plan. May work, I don't know. Perhaps we can strike a bargain with him. Bargain? Yes, our lives for the masks. We must find someone else who will keep them for us. Uh, Greg will do that. Greg? Uh, a friend of ours, Greg Hunter. We must tell him it will be dangerous. I will. Good. Get in touch with him immediately. Or I am positive that Asher will return tonight. <laughs> I called Greg and told him of our plan. Harold decided that he'd go back to Greg's apartment with the masks, and if Ashore agreed to the bargain, we would send him there and Harold would return them to him. Greg would stay with us to await the appearance of Ashore. By six o'clock that evening, Harold had gone to Greg's apartment with the masks, and Greg had come to our house to await our expected visitor. At 7.30, the shades of night had diffused themselves across the sky. By 8.30, the tension had mounted in each of us to a point where we were jumpy and, and irritable. What time is it? A little past 8.30. Do you, do you think he'll come? Uncle Harold said he would. Just waiting. It makes me nervous. So am I. Listen. Yeah, I heard it too. Well, the waiting is over now. Oh, Bert. Bert, I'm frightened. Yeah, everything will be all right, Marsha. I don't know. I feel that something's going to go wrong. He's here. Well, let's go let him in. All right. Are you ready? Yes, I guess so. Here goes. Azor's not here. No, but he will be. Here he comes. I'm sorry, gentlemen. It seems that my dog has been scratching at your door again. We've been expecting you. Oh, really? 
Yes, won't you come in? If you don't mind, come back later. You have a very pleasant little home. Oh, thank you. Do you mind if I set my package down here? Go right ahead. I see the masks are gone. Yes. We put them away. They were very interesting, you know. Weren't they, Barley? Barley is a good dog, yet he frightens people sometimes. You, uh, you came here for the masks, didn't you? The masks? The masks of Asia. Oh. You don't have them, though, do you? Not right here. You have them somewhere else? Yes. We'll, we'll make a bargain with you. We'll return the masks if you leave us alone. Then you know the legend of Asia. Yes. I brought you something. It's in this package. In time, Barry. In time. What? What about the bargain? The bargain? Oh, yes, the bargain. I'm afraid I can't agree to it. Why? You see, I already have the masks of Asia. Look for yourselves. But... Uh, Uncle Harold... ...is no longer alive. Why, you dirty... I'll tear that mask off your face and... Quiet, Malik. Quiet. I have no mask on, Mr. Stanton. But... But... Uh, you I... are gazing upon the face of Asia. And those who see him no longer remain alive. Now, Balak. Now. Look out! Look out! Look out! It is time for us to go back, Balak. We have recovered the masks of Asia, and we have many calls to make. Tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental.